this year wallet it's a white girl why are you carrying pictures of white kids they must friends she think he's as good as me boy I'm as good as you are. Niggas, hold that boy down. Let's grab them plies. I got something for you, boy. Let me see inside. You know I can't, Amy. Mr. Rayner, open the box. I have the papers right here. I, I simply can't. Then fine. Get me a hammer, a crowbar, whatever it takes. I'm opening this here box today. Okay, I'll do it. Mr. Witten, sorry to bother you, sir, but I'm Bill Huey, a writer. Yes? I would like to pay your clients J.W. Milliam and Roy Bryant if they confess to what really happened to Emmett Till. The jury already vindicated them. So you know they're no longer in any jeopardy. Why should they trust you, not some other reporter crawling all around here? Well, I'm the one that discovered why Emmett's father was killed. Go on, Mr. Huey. I'm willing to pay them about $4,000 for the rights, if they tell me the truth. So I'm guessing you mean 3000 for them and 1000 for attorney fees. Is that right, Mr. Huey? Yes, sir. And they just have to tell the truth. I want a confession. Hell, I never even asked them. They're innocent as far as I know. Well, thanks, Mr. Huey, for letting us speak. Sure. I sure could use the money. You're just looking for the truth, boys. Whatever that might be. Now, are you sure the law can't try you us? You can't be tried for the same crime twice, J.W. I'm so sure about that. Well, I am. Fine, Roy. You talk. Let's start. Emmett Dale coming into your store with money. You ready, Mr. Hewitt? Um, yes. Well, uh, me and my wife, Carolyn, we run a store that all the local cotton pickers buy from. There's are groceries, meats, candies. We're real good to them, and they's real good to us. And everybody knows their place. And that little fat boy come from Chicago. <laughs> Go ahead, Amy. Show them what you showed me. These are my friends from Chicago. They all white. You ain't gonna make white friends down here. Why? Well, we as good as they are. Who's that white girl? Who? Her? Yeah. Well, th that's my g girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bobo, you fool. You ain't been with no white girl. You lying. You so crazy. <laughs> if you've been with a white girl, go inside and show us how you do <laughs> Come on, Bo. Best put that wallet away. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you ain't had no white girl. <laughs> <laughs> Watch how it's done. <laughs> that boy's gonna get himself killed. I don't feel nothing. <laughs> That's just a beer belly. That all. Ha <laughs> 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 ha. Uh. 
how about a d d d date? Don't you touch me, boy! No, maybe. Then that boy chased Kale into the back of the stall, grabbing on her waist, saying, she knows how to treat a white woman. Well, my wife was so scared, knowing she didn't have a gun underneath the counter, that she ran out of the car to get her a gun. <laughs> and you know what that little nigger boy gun and did? Brother, he goddamn whistled at her. You just don't damn do that, Mississippi. Well, Carolyn told J.W.'s wife, well, Anita. Well, his wife and my wife, well, they're as close as we Well, anyway, I guess they didn't want us knowing. But in a town like money, ain't nobody keeping a secret from nobody. Unless you're white. You fellas uh, need a break? <laughs> Nah, friend, we just getting started. Well, I'll start asking around where this boy might be at so I can have a little talk with him. Well, so as luck may have it, see, uh, we's told that this little nigga was up, be over at Moe's Wright's place. Well, and we ain't ever been no, over Moe's Wright's been place before that night, but I, I come up yelling, Preacher! <laughs> Preacher! Preacher! You got them boys from Chicago? Yes, sir. We'll talk to that fat boy. The one that done the talking in money. That the boy. That the boy? Come on now, fat boy, it's get up. It's gonna be okay, Simi. They're just gonna try to scare me a little bit. You go on, get back to bed, you hear? Go on now, boy. When that nigga great uncle testified at our trial, stood up and pointed at us in court, <laughs> well, da he, da he, or whatever that old man said. From what I know, that's the first time that a black man had ever testified against a white man. In these parts. Let me tell you, that old boy, he's lucky he's on to Chicago. He'd have been next. Hmm. Let's get back to the night you come for Emmett. Was anybody here with you? No, they're just, just Roy and me that night. That's right, just, just me and Roy that night. Yes, sir. What happened next? I remember J.W. asking old Mose if he knew us. <laughs> Smart old man, he answered right. No, no, you give me those pants. You won't be needing those, boy. Come on now. No, you ain't need those either. Get your shoes on, boy. I ain't got all night. I see over there. Roll on over, get to sleep. You hear me? Now, you recognize any of us here? No, sir. I don't know you. How old are you, old boy? 64. If you want to live to see 65, you ain't recognize any of us here. Come on, boy. We'll pay you whatever you want. Just release him. Go on back to bed, woman. Mind your business. I want to hear them springs. P -p Please, what will it cost to make this right? Well, you can even have what we have. Well, how much you talking? Oh, please. Keep walking. No, no, right. no, please, sir, please. No, 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 no. Well, that boy wasn't even scared of us. Yeah, he gave us no choice but to oh, beat up he was up strong on for 14, Almost too. full grown, as far as uh -huh. I could tell. So, after you kidnapped Emmett, what did you do with him? Well, we drove him to We lit. took him to a shed on my property where we could talk to him. <clears throat> we was just trying to scare the little nigger. Him again, J.W. Now, you will address me as yes, sir, and no, sir. You got that, boy? You gonna love respect, nigger. Look at me. I'm gonna make you never won't talk to a white woman again. You hear me, boy? Where's Roy? Roy, get on over here and show some dignity for your wife, you coward. Come on now. Well, doing nothing ain't gonna make you a man. Come on, boy. Get in there. You can hear it higher than that. You ain't never gonna touch a white woman ever again. <laughs> Are we done now? You're pathetic. Look at me, boy. What you got to say for yourself now? Just do what he said. Just do what he Too says. tight. They gonna hurt you, boy. Get enough. They gonna hurt you. Enough. I ain't done. 
nothing wrong. Well, we were just trying to scare the boy. What could we do? We had to put the little nigger in his place. Well, we really whipped that son of a bitch. Well, I asked that boy one last time. Do you still think you're better than us, boy? Do you still think you're the same as white people? I'm talking to you, boy, what you say. That's it. Hold this boy down. I think you're having trouble hearing me, boy. Maybe this will help. He can hear you just fine, boy. Give me that, yeah. You still think you're better than us? Even after all this? Tell him you ain't better than us. Tell me he's better than you. No. Ain't nobody better than nobody. I think you're having trouble seeing me, brother. <laughs> Hold them down. Well, he's just playing on scaring him and letting him go, that's all. Well, beating up on him a little bit, try to put the scare at him, but uh, he wasn't afraid of us. <laughs> Not that he was showing. <laughs> all right, boy. I'm gonna ask you one more time. You still think you better than us? Yeah. What the hell, J.W.? You ain't better than us now. We're on. Please continue. Well, we drove around with Emmett trying to figure out what to do. Where was Emmett? Well, he was in the back of the truck. How'd you know he wasn't gonna escape? Well, <laughs> Roy was watching her to make sure he didn't. Where's that blood coming from? It's a deer. But hunting season's not... Now this is what happens to them smart niggas in Mississippi. So I make Emmett carry a 75-pound gin fan, and the boy can barely carry it, and I make him lift it up in the truck. Right, Roy? Yep, yep, that, that's, that's right, it's about right. Well, by this time it's morning, and it's starting to get light outside, so we gotta make sure that nobody sees us and thinks we're stealing this fan. So next you take Emmett to the river? Yeah, I make that fat little boy take off his clothes and tie some barbed wire around his neck. So I have that gun to that little nigger boy's head, and I ask him, you ever been with a white woman, boy? And that nigga look up at me and told me he'd been with a white woman. So then I asked him if he still thought he was as good as I was for the last time. You know what that boy say? He look at me and he say, yeah. Well, I had no choice, sir. I had to shoot him right up there on that hill. And then we just push his body over into the water. Give me that there suit. Yeah, who shows that? Let me tell you. My wife used to ace me during the trial, if you'd done it. I never wanted to know. I always told her no. What's she gonna say when she hears this? Hmm. Well, she's gonna say proudly that you got us off for doing something that don't damn mean nothing around here. So, Mr. Hewitt, uh, who gonna play us if you make a, a movie about our lives over this? I don't know, Roy. Uh, I, I hope it's Montgomery Cliff. <laughs> or maybe they get Peter Lorre to play you. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, we done now? We gonna get the money? We good. I'm just gonna need you to read and sign a few things first. Uh, what have I done? Well, John and Bill, uh, we're heading out for some whiskey to celebrate. Uh, Y'all want to join us? Sure. How about you, you coming? Nah, I better get writing before tomorrow. Mr. Hewer. I did a little research of my own. You did? On you. If you was the first to discover Emmett Till's father wasn't killed in action during the war, but instead was executed for rape and murder. How come you wasn't the first to write that story? I didn't want anything coming out that would hurt the chances of J.W. and Roy from being found guilty. Well, it got over anyway. Well, maybe you're a good attorney. I like to oh, think maybe. so. Oh, maybe. 
white men killed a black boy in Mississippi. When all this blows over, no one's gonna remember who Emmett Till was anyway. Well, I would like to think that I am good at my job too. Good day, Mr. Whitten. Look what they did to my boy. <laughs> Hate isn't going to breed in me now, as it shouldn't have bred in the hate that killed my boy. <sighs> Emmett isn't going to die in vain. We're going to have an open casket, Mr. Rayner. For Mrs. T. I want the world to see what they've done to my boy. I want them to see him as I see him now. <laughs> the world is going to change because of you. I promise. <laughs> 